Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of One Man Stream. This episode is going to be a little bit different. It actually came about by a comment I heard on one of the vMix forums uh, by a very close friend of mine. All right guys, I need your help. I'm not live right now. I'm, this is just literally the setup, but these are my resources. is literally pulling this and I'm not even live. I went from 115 down to 40 and I'm still pulling these resources. What am I doing wrong? Please tell me, why is this happening? So when I saw that, it reminded me of an issue that I used to run into. A lot of times in the promotions that we do, we have a lot of images. We do a lot of combat sports, mixed martial arts, boxing and the like. And we have individual images for each one of the fighters. And then we also have uh, what we call a fight slate, which shows both the fighters and then it shows their statistics. So oftentimes I was coming up to a situation where I was getting ready to go live and I had 60, 70, sometimes 80 uh, inputs. And that put an awful lot of strain uh, on my computer. Uh, what I use when I'm going out and doing things um, in the field is I have a, a Hades Canyon NUC that I use. And it's a, it's a fairly you know, beefy machine, uh, but still I was coming up with high render time and dropping frames and it just wasn't very pleasing to look at. So I actually came up uh, with a solution and I'm going to share that with you uh, a, a little bit later. But let me show you what I found on vMix's website. If you go to their website under forum, uh, you have this uh, right here where it says diagnosing high render times. And this is a very valuable uh, document a very valuable piece of information. The first one has to do with slow graphics cards. The second one has to do with the GE experience share feature. And I'm not going to go over these, but the one that I gravitated to was this one right here where it said too many inputs. And then that's what made me come up with the solution uh, that I'm going to show you here in a little bit. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you the rest of these four uh, graphics card installed in the incorrect slot on the motherboard. They uh, also list a link uh, to a utility that you can use to make sure that you have it uh, in your most powerful uh, slot on your motherboard. Uh, having two or more graphics cards installed can be an issue. Uh, also driver issues. You want to make sure you have the latest and greatest of the drivers. Uh, so make sure you always keep your drivers up to date. If you have a laptop running under battery power, uh, and I did not realize this, but a laptop running under battery power can cause a high render time. Also, uh, settings within your NVIDIA control panel uh, can have an effect on your render time. Having multiple displays and then having other applications running in the background, or if you have your uh, computer under a very high load or very high strain, uh, all these things can contribute to a uh, high render. I encourage you to go uh, to the knowledge base at vMix and look over this document if you're having issues uh, with your uh, rendering time. What I'm going to show you right now is all of the different inputs that I have right now. And I have a whole lot of inputs. I never have this uh, many inputs when I'm going live, but just for this demonstration, I tried to put in a whole bunch of inputs. So you can see when I started Instant Replay, my resources jumped from uh, where they were about 25%. They bounced as high as 45%. And it looks like they're hovering uh, in the low 30s. But you can see down here, I have a bunch of inputs. I have all these images, I have 20 of these, I have replay, production elements, I have uh, several movies that I have listed here, then I have a whole bunch more images here, and I believe that in the entire production, I have 68 inputs, which is, which is a whole lot more uh, than I ever use. So I'm gonna show you what I do, uh, how I can consolidate all these. I also saw on the forum uh, where people were talking about uh, closing out inputs and I don't think they meant actually getting rid of them I think they just meant uh, closing them down so if you just right click on the menu bar on these inputs you can see uh, where it's closing them down making them smaller and if you want them to op want to open them back up on this one that says D Patrick I'm just right clicking on it again and you can see that opens right up let's go ahead and send this one to output we thank you for your support Welcome to D. Patrick Ford, your local Ford store. We would love to earn your business, whether that's in our... And then we're back to our setup. So my uh, resources did pop up again when I started playing out that movie, which is something that you would expect. 
Well, I alluded to the fact that I have a workaround or something that I do, and I'm going to show you that right now. What I'm going to do is we're going to go over to vMix UTC. And I'm going up to the widget and I'm going to go up here and click on the widget button and then I'm going to click on list and I'm going to entitle this fight slates just so it'll stand out. I'm going to go ahead and make the color of it red. And for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. So we're going to put this right here. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create an input and I'm going to click on the hamburger menu and I'm going to open up GT title designer. Okay, so all I did is I went up here under file, I clicked on file and I selected new and it brought up this blank canvas right here. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image. Okay, so I'm just going to use this as a placeholder. Let's just click on this over here and we're just going to call it image placeholder. So all we're going to do, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to save this. And I'm just going to call this image display input and click save. Now we're now looking at the complete production again. I'm going to go down here to where it says add input and then I'm going to click on title. I'm going to click on the tab here that says recent and that's going to bring us to the one that we just made and we're going to click OK. It's this one right here that's displayed in the preview window. So now let's go back to vMix UTC and in vMix UTC we're going to go ahead and we're going to map it. So let's click on the cog. We're going to go back here and fix our misspelling. It's not slays, it's slates. And now we're going to map it. Now one thing that I, I, I will let you know is when you're working on a production and you're adding things, it doesn't automatically refresh. So I'm going to come over here to the sync button and I'm going to click sync. And now I'm going to go back to the cog. I'm going to click on title mapping. The input is going to be all the way down here at the bottom, the one that says image display input. And then we're going to map it to the image placeholder. So you can either add a list or you can add items one at a time. So just to show you how to add them one at a time, I'm going to click on this plus button three times and then I'm going to go to where I have some of the slate. So I'm going to click on this one right here that says Chris Bailey and then I'm going to click on copy path and I'm going to come over here to our um, list widget we created in vMix UTC and right click and paste. And I'm going to do it one more time. Let's find a different type of image. We're going to click on this one here, go back and click copy path. Then we're going to find us an open spot, right click and paste. And we'll do it one more time. We're going to click on this one, copy path, find us that third open spot, right click and paste. And then one thing we have to do is we have to come back and take these quotation marks out. If you leave those quotation marks in, uh, the image will not display correctly. So let's go ahead and take the ones out at the beginning and the ones out at the end. And then we're going to click OK. Now, so that you can see what's going on in the main vMix production, I'm going to go up here under Widgets and I'm going to click on External Data and click on NDI Monitor. I'm going to stretch it out and I'm going to go to the settings. Under NDI Monitor, uh, and we have a tutorial that's uh, solely uh, related to NDI Monitor. And if you're not familiar with it, I suggest watching that. Uh, there's a file that you need uh, in that tutorial. I show you how to download that file and then how to add it uh, in right here. You would just click on this file button, uh, direct the browser to where you have downloaded that file, then click OK, and it brings that file in. You need to have this in order for NDI Monitor to work correctly. So we're going to click OK. And then we're going to come up here on this uh, drop down menu and I'm going to click vMix Output 1. And this is the main output from my vMix production. So let's go ahead and bring in the graphic and it's this right here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, cut to that graphic. And this is the graphic. So now we're going to go to the drop down menu right here. 
I'm going to select one of the items I put in the drop down menu. I'm going to select this one. You can see right here, this is now the output from our main vMix production. You can see it right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the next image and you can see how it changes and click on the next image and you can see how it changes. So I've used one input and in vMix UTC and I'm able to eliminate three inputs that we originally had in our vMix production. Okay, so what I did when I opened uh, or when I created the NDI monitor is I actually, I actually mapped it to output two instead of output one. Output one is my program out, output two is my preview. And I'll show you why I did it this way. Let's go back to this right here. I'm gonna click on settings. And if I go to outputs, you can see output one is the main output and output two is preview. I set it up this way so when I go to the NDI in just a moment and I'm utilizing the drop down menu from the vMix UTC screen, you'll be able to see what's going on in the main vMix production. So this is actually preview, but this is the image that we're using. This is the input that we just put in, the one that we entitled image display input. And you can see as I go up here and I click this drop down menu, you can see that that image is changing. And it would do the exact same thing if I had it in output. So I'm gonna show you one more thing. Let's click on the settings menu and let's go to this button right here and you can see where it says load list. Okay, well the only thing that I know that I have set up the way that I want it to be set up is this one right here, which is football logo. So I'm gonna click okay. And you can see that it brings all of these different files in. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And these are actually logos that we use for the different um, high school broadcasts that we do. And you can see where it brought in that entire list. I'll click OK. And then when I go up here under the drop down menu, you can see all those items just came in. So let's clip, click through a few of them. It's still mapped to that exact same input, which is the image display input. And it's mapped to the image placeholder. And so now when we click through these different images, you can see where they're all going to change. In that input that we created. So now all that you would have to do, find your image uh, in your files. And this is where I had them all with the downloads. All you would have to do is find that image and you'd have to click on it. You'd have to copy the path. Bring the path over here to an open spot, right click and paste, and then go back and take those quotation marks uh, on the, uh, of the path in the beginning and the end. You could actually do something very similar in vMix. So we're gonna go under add input, and then we're gonna click on this one right here that says list, and then click on the button that says add. And then let's go down to where the slates are and we're going to click on this first one and then hold down the control key on the keyboard and then just keep clicking on all of these different slates fighter matchup slates that we had from a previous promotion and click OK and then you can see where all of these come in on this list so we're going to click OK. So we're going to bring this up and you can see it in the preview window. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring it into program. I'm going to click on list and it brings the list up and let's click on the first one and click play out and you can see where it goes into the output. I'm going to click on the next one in the list right here where it says Gwen versus Hall. I'm going to click on that and click play out and you can see where it brings in Gwen versus Hall. I'll click on the next one, Falk versus Carol, and click play out, and it brings in Falk versus Carol. So let's go back to this view so you can actually see what's going on. Right now it says Falk versus Carol. I'm going to click on Lamaster versus uh, Zami and click play out. And you can see where it plays out and goes to the uh, program. Unfortunately, with the way that I have this set up, it's not letting you see everything at one time, but that's, uh, that's not a deal breaker, I don't think. Okay, so that was examples of two ways that you can eliminate 
uh, inputs and by eliminating all these inputs you're actually going to decrease your render time and by decreasing your render time uh, you're not going to be drop dropping frames and making your uh, production look choppy so the first way that we did it was where we created a list widget in vmix utc and then you remember at first we just clicked it a few times and then went to our file menu and brought in the files we wanted we just copied the path and right clicked and pasted and then went back and took the quotation marks out at the beginning and the end that was uh, method one and then method two was when we went down here to add input we added an input we came down here to the third one that says list and then we clicked on add and then we went to our images and we highlighted all the images we wanted and hit open after we add them all it uh, puts it in a list and then when you want to play out a specific one you go up to uh, the name of the one that you want to play out and you click play out and you can see where that when you hit play out it automatically goes to program uh, with this method right here one thing that you can do is you can uh, move items up and down i've highlighted rodriguez versus pal and i click these up buttons and you can bring that one to the top you can see this one here looks a little bit bolder the one that you currently have in play out which is right here the one that says falk versus carol uh, you can see where it's just a little bit bolder and it gives you an idea of the one that you currently have visible that concludes our tutorial today where we talked about decreasing your render time uh, by eliminating your inputs or decreasing the amount of inputs that you have uh, in your particular production. Uh, if you're having issues with this, make sure you do go to the vMix, the vMix knowledge base and check out this article right here. This is the one that I referenced today and the topic that we covered today uh, was too many inputs. There's a lot of really good information here uh, if you're having problems uh, with your render time. As I mentioned in the uh, close of our last tutorial, I will be at NAB next week. I'll be there Monday through Thursday. If you uh, see me at NAB, just come up and introduce yourself, and I'll have one of these one-man stream uh, mouse pads for you. I'm also getting ready to uh, add some one-man stream merchandise to the website. I'm soon going to have t-shirts, and I'll also have the mouse pads there. I've had a lot of requests for the vMix UTC set up, so I'm going to start putting those on the website as well. If you're enjoying these tutorials, please give us a thumbs up and a like, and make sure that you do subscribe so that you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted. If you get a chance, make sure you do stop by onemanstream.com. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. Thank you so much.